everyone, it's Nathan. Welcome back to Maple Street. Happy birthday, Cary Grant. Today, in celebration of what would have been his 120th birthday, I am talking about my 10 favorite movies from him. Cary Grant is one of my all-time favorites, definitely a highly ranked actor of the classic Hollywood era. I've seen 22 movies from him. As always, I'm going to go over the ones I've seen right now, just so you have an idea of what will be included in the top 10 list. If you don't see a movie on the list, that means I haven't seen it. Feel free to recommend it in the comments below. He was so suave, such a fine actor. There's a reason that he's still remembered today so well, so clearly. And I can't wait to share with you my top 10. I also want to hear what your top 10 is. So as you watch the video, leave your comments below what number you would rank each movie at. Let's get a conversation going. Without further ado, let's get started on my top 10 movies from Cary Grant. <laughs> Alright, coming in at number 10, we have his only team up with Frank Capra. It is Arsenic and Old Lace. It's literally about Cary Grant. He's recently been married. Right before the honeymoon, though, he runs home. And as he runs home, he finds out that his two aunts that he loves so dearly have a hobby of killing people. Specifically, lonely old men that they bury in their cellar. And the funny thing is, this is far from a horror movie. This is very much so a comedy, screwball comedy, I would say. So many funny things happen. The fact that it has such a serious plot and has a fun time with it. That's what makes Arsenic and Old Lace such a great time. And I know this video is about Cary Grant, but I gotta throw a shout out to Josephine Hull. I love her in anything I see her in, and she is great as one of the ants in this movie. Number nine is Penny Serenade. This is one of those movies that starts at present time, and the movie you're watching is everything that has already happened, but it's preparing you for where you're at in the beginning. But it has a very interesting way of telling the story. It does it through song. Our main character, played by Irene Dunn, is listening to different songs that meant something to her throughout her life. Each song that's played, it transitions to a specific memory. It's ultimately a love story about her and Cary Grant getting together, falling in love, working through their various problems they've had and various obstacles they've encountered. The first half is good. I think the second half is where the movie really excels. It went in a direction that I wasn't expecting, and I think it really complemented the movie and definitely added some emotion to it that I wasn't anticipating when I went into it blindly. There's a very beautiful manger scene towards the end, and so... I would recommend watching it in December. It's not a full-out Christmas movie, but that manger scene definitely helps. Plus, this is one of two movies that Cary Grant received an Oscar nomination for, and he does a great job, so that's fun too. Number eight goes to another team-up between Irene Dunn and Cary Grant, and no, it is not The Awful Truth. It's actually my favorite wife. This movie plot is pretty bonkers. Picture the movie Brothers with Tobey Maguire, Jake Gyllenhaal, Natalie Portman, but it's a comedy. Basically, Cary Grant's married to Irene Dunn, but she goes off to see gets lost at sea, is gone for seven years, and in that time period, he finds another woman, falls in love with her. The day he gets married to this new woman, Irene Dunn's character shows up again from being lost for the last seven years. But a fun twist happens when you find out that not only was she lost at sea, she got stranded on an island and she wasn't alone. In fact, she was with another man. So Cary Grant's jealousy is fuming. He wants to know all the details while she wants to know all the details about what he's been up to in the last seven years. Although it has all the makings of a drama and an angry couple, it's very funny. There's a specific scene that has Cary Grant spying on this said man that was stranded on the island with his wife, ex-wife, however you want to refer to her. It's so funny. I was laughing out loud. And there were other scenes too that just had me laughing. For such a serious plot on paper, it was a very funny movie put to screen. Number seven, we have another Christmas movie. It is The Bishop's Wife. This movie has Cary Grant playing an angel in a very non-traditional way. He's definitely not an angel character you'd think of, like Clarence from It's a Wonderful Life. Him as an angel, he does good deeds, but he has a very interesting method of doing the good deeds. In a nutshell, he is visiting this town trying to improve the life of this bishop who is very stressed out with this project he's involved with. Not only is he trying to improve his life with the project he's involved with, but also his marriage, his relationship with his daughter. And along the way, not only is he improving this bishop's wife, but he's helping the people of the town and the different problems or struggles that they're going through. So in that regard, it's a really feel-good movie. The reason I say he has interesting methods of being an angel is because some points of the movie 
he's very much so flirting with the bishop's wife. I don't know if that's the best method of trying to strengthen the bishop's marriage to his wife. You know, it definitely helps the bishop see, like, yes, I am jealous of this man, and I love my wife, I don't like what he's doing, and so in that regard, if you look at it that way, then he does a great job. But I just think it's an interesting method to get to, and it wouldn't have been... <laughs> The first thing that I suggest this angel does, but what do I know? I'm not an angel. What am I talking about? I'm a little angel. Everyone knows it. The Bishop's Wife also gets points because there's plenty of Christmas spirit. It's a great movie, honestly. I talk about the little problems I have with it, but I've seen it twice. I really enjoyed it both times and I highly recommend it. I suggested watching Penny Serenade in December. If you're going to watch The Bishop's Wife, definitely watch it in December. Like it's a full on Christmas movie. From here on out, I have all nine out of 10 movies slash 10 out of 10 movies. Starting out at number six, I have An Affair to Remember. Everything I had heard about the movie, it being an iconic, romantic, classic Hollywood film, it lived up to those expectations. Like it was one of those movies that it ended and I was like, yeah, like of course that was good. I've heard nothing but good things about it. Of course I had a great time. Time. The ending is very impactful and special and it's a tearjerker too. In fact, fun little story, I was watching it on TV. My mom came in in the last 15 minutes. Having not seen any of the movie, I gave her a quick background of what happened and she was crying by the end of it. The ending scene is one of my favorite Cary Grant scenes in all of his movies. Number five, we have The Philadelphia Story. Cary Grant, Jimmy Stewart, Catherine Hepburn. What a trio right there. I especially love it for Jimmy Stewart and Cary Grant teaming up together, especially because those two actors are very much so compared. Their careers were happening at the same time. Cary Grant's a little earlier than Jimmy Stewart's, but you get the idea. They're often compared to each other, and so to see them teamed up together is just such a treat. It's an older movie, and sometimes those older movies, you know, the humor doesn't quite connect with me. This one definitely connects. I think it's hilarious from the moment it begins, too. Like, right when Cary Grant is moving out of the house, breaking up with Katherine Hepburn, I'm already laughing at certain things that happen in that initial opening scene. Then you've got the iconic Jimmy Stewart drunk scene, him singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow, but I shouldn't be talking about Jimmy Stewart. This is Cary Grant's video. <laughs> I don't know what more to say other than that it's one of the earliest examples of a love triangle done well, to my knowledge at least. Really enjoy it. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Coming in at number four, I have the first Alfred Hitchcock movie on the list, which shows how great the Alfred Hitchcock movies are with Cary Grant. It is To Catch a Thief. It's one of the most beautiful looking movies I've ever seen, and I don't say that lightly. I want more movies to look like this. I want to see more movies from this time period. You can tell it was filmed on location. It just feels so authentic. Authentic. The colors are amazing. The chemistry between Cary Grant and Grace Kelly is incredible. The fireworks scene, I was getting all giddy the last time I watched this movie because it's just such a well-filmed scene. If I were to pin any cons on the movie, I'd say it's not as exciting on a rewatch because you know exactly what to expect. I think the first time seeing it, not knowing how it was going to end, made it a little bit more exciting, but the lack of excitement was made up for from the beautiful cinematography and location location, the great chemistry, and all the things that I mentioned before. Number three, we have another Alfred Hitchcock team up and probably Cary Grant's most iconic movie, it is North by Northwest. This is a movie that grows on me every time I watch it. I've seen it probably four times in my life now, and it was actually one of the earliest Hitchcock films, and Cary Grant films for that matter, that I had ever seen. And every time I watch it, it gets better. My most recent watch was actually in the movie theaters, seeing the crop duster scene on the big screen and hearing that surround sound was just, it was incredible. It was memorable and I loved it. It was definitely my favorite sequence of the movie. But one thing that I forget about very often often when North by Northwest comes in the conversation is just how funny it is and how likable Cary Grant's Roger Thornhill is. He's just such a great character. You love following him. You are rooting for him. You're rooting for him to get with Eva Marie Saint's character. It's a movie that's very easy to be engaged in. And I think it's a pretty complex plot too. I know the first time I saw it, which was back in high school, I was lost. Like I didn't know what was happening. I was more so just watching it because, oh, it's an old movie directed by Alfred Hitchcock. Wow, that's so cool. But as I get older and I as I understand what's happening and can just kind of sit back and enjoy the ride. I think that's why the movie gets better every time I see it. North by Northwest is absolutely iconic. Last year, I actually had the chance of visiting part of the set and the Academy Museum, the Academy Awards Museum. So that was pretty cool too. Coming in at number two, I have Charade. Cary Grant and Audrey Hepburn, kind of like him and Grace Kelly, they just have an incredible chemistry. They work together very well. And I think the reason this beats North by Northwest is for 
one, I think the pacing is a little better. North by Northwest has some pacing issues around the middle, I'd say, where it just kind of gets slower. Whereas for me, Charade is such a crazy plot going so many different directions that there's never a dull moment. I also find Charade to be a funnier movie and a wittier script. And plus it helps that Audrey Hepburn is arguably my favorite actress of all time. So for those reasons, I gotta give it to Charade. If you don't know the plot of Charade, I say don't look it up. Just go into the movie and let it happen. It is a really, really fun movie full of twists, surprises. Within the first few minutes, you're going to be wondering what the heck you're watching. And right when you think you have the plot figured out, another thing's revealed. And so you have it figured out again. And then another thing is revealed and you don't know what to believe until the final minute of the movie. There's a face that Cary Grant does. I've mentioned it on the channel before. I know I've mentioned it because I love it so much. When you see the scene and you see the face, you'll know what one I'm talking about. Think of me next time. All right. And my number one favorite Cary Grant movie, it has to be Notorious. Like North by Northwest, like Charade, this movie gets better every time that I watch it, and I appreciate it even more. It's a very exciting movie, but at the same time, it's not exciting like North by Northwest or like Psycho. It's kind of a grounded, suspenseful, exciting film. I've talked about the chemistry between the actors. Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman have to be in that conversation as well because they both are incredible. Then there's also the iconic cinematography, specifically that scene where the camera pans from the top of the staircase and goes down to Ingrid Bergman's hand and focuses on the key. It's iconic for many reasons, but for one, it just wasn't the type of shots that you saw in that time of filmmaking, so you can't help but appreciate it. A lot of suspenseful scenes too. You're just interested to see whether or not Ingrid Bergman's character is successful in accomplishing this mission she has been assigned. As I mentioned at the beginning, please share your top 10 in the comments below. I'd love to get some recommendations and learn more about what movies I'm missing out on. Stay tuned. My next video is going to be my movie award show where I award my favorite movies from 2023, all my first time watching. In the meantime, feel free to check out the playlist that I will link at the end where you can watch past year's movie award shows and prepare yourself for this year's movie award shows. Thank you all for visiting Maple Street. I'll see you next time.